So Elementor Pro and Elementor are a great visual page builder, but we can always make it just that extra little bit better. And we're going to take a look at a plugin today that's completely free, but enhances the interface and allows you to customize and tweak it to get it exactly the way you want. So without further ado, let's just jump into the dashboard of WordPress, fire up that plugin and take a look at what options we have available. Hi and welcome to WP Tuts. My name is Paul C and this is the channel where I show you how to create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon to be notified of our weekly new content as soon as it's added to the channel. So what is this plugin? It's granular controls for Elementor. And as you can see, we've got a couple of different things we can do. We can customize the WordPress admin dashboard. We can customize the Elementor UI. We can go in and add some extra functionality in there, things like parallax and zoom effects, and as well as particle effects. We've just got a ton of great things we can do. So I'd recommend checking out the granularcontrols.com website, which will give you a really good overview of all the different things you can do. Like I say, this is completely free. I just want to make you aware of what can be done with it. So what we're going to do is just jump over to the dashboard. As always, jump into the plugins, come down to Add New. And if you search for granular controls, You can see we now get the option to install that. I've already done this. Just install it and activate it like you would any other plugin. Once we've done that, we get a new entry in the Elementor menu. So we come down, you can see we've got granular controls. If we open that up, we've got three tabs, general, editor options, and advanced settings. It's all pretty self-explanatory what's going on here, but I'm gonna take you through some of the key ones that I think are the most important. As you can see, we've got accordions closed and removed dashboard widget. Well, one of the pet hates that I have, and if I just jump over to the dashboard, I'll show you what I'm talking about, is there's a common theme at the moment where you get different plugin and theme developers that they seem to think it's a great idea to drop these different new tabs into your dashboard. Yes, you can come in to disable them at the top, but the problem is when you've got a client, for example, you don't necessarily want them to know that you're using themes like Ocean WP or Elementor as your visual page builder. So anything that allows me to completely disable those across the board is a great thing. So what we're gonna do, jump back into granular controls and you can see, I'm gonna say remove dashboard widget, say yes, hit save changes on there. We'll just jump back onto our dashboard, refresh, and you can see that's now gone. Now, this is one of those things that I think uh, Nicholas over at Ocean WP needs to give us the option to enable and disable this from the customizer, and it's then gone. Great for you guys, not so good for us when you've got 20 plugins that want to put these different panels onto your dashboard. Okay, so let's just come back over. As you can see, accordions closed. Now, by default, if you create an accordion in a page, there's always the first accordion is open as default. So let me just demonstrate what I'm talking about. If I jump over to my test section, you can see there's an accordion. If I refresh the page, you can see the first item in that accordion is already open by default. Now, let's just say we don't want that to be the case. We want everything to be closed up. Well, let's come back to granular controls. Let's just say accordions closed and say yes, and save the changes on there. Now, if we come back and refresh the page, you'll see now by default, all the accordions are closed. One of those little things that really does seem like a, a kind of a no brainer or something you think, well, why would I worry about that? But if you've got a lot of accordions on the screen, multiple different ones, it's nice to have them all closed. So that's a pretty cool little feature. Okay, so that's pretty much all you've got under the general controls. If we jump into the editor options, this is where we can fine tune and tweak the actual editor of Elementor and Elementor Pro, the interface that we're working with. So you can see, if we scroll through, we've got a couple of different options available. We can change the default editor color. So let's just take a quick look at that in action. So we'll leave it the default. So if we jump back over, you can see this is the default layout. It's just gray and white. So let's come back over and you can see we've got quite a few different options in there. What would be nice is the ability to actually create your own skins in this. So that might be a nice little option where you can customize it as opposed to just choosing one of these predefined layouts. So let's just say we go for dark, click on there, and we'll just come down and we'll save the changes on there. Come back in, refresh the page, let Elementor reload back in, and we'll find now we have a dark interface. So if you're the kind of person you prefer to work in this way, it's a great and simple way to do it. So you can come back in, let's just choose a different one. Let's just say, for example, a deep blue. Again, we'll come down, save the changes, jump back over and refresh the page, and you'll see now that our editor picks up a completely different style again. So pretty cool. So that's how we can change the editor colors. I'm gonna put that back to what it was. 
You can see we've got the element, uh, Elementor UI hack widget panel. So this is hacking away the UI frustration. So you can see there's a various different frustrations that people have had when they're working with Elementor. Things like the little sort of, if you put a negative margin and stuff like that in there, the interface kind of falls apart and you can't access it. This is a great way of being able to hack those different things to get rid of some of those annoyances, should we say. I'm going to leave the enable parallax and particles for now. We'll come back to those in a minute. You can see we've got the enable exit bar, which is a new addition to the interface. It's not something you can actually access without using this plugin. So let's click on yes, we'll add that in there, save the changes, come back in and refresh, and you'll see we now get a new little section as part of our interface, which is this exit the dashboard and view live page. So it's a great way of having that on screen all the time, and you can easily just drag that around and position it where you want. You see it snaps which is really nice little add-on. So you can position that wherever you want and you've always got access to that ability to exit out to your dashboard without the need to come back up to the little hamburger menu in the top corner, click on there and say exit the dashboard. Might seem one of the things that is, that's not a, not a problem, but there are a lot of people that were really kind of frustrated with this extra mouse click to access the exit to dashboard option in the recent update to the interface in Elemental. So next up, we've got a couple of different things that we can do with how different elements inside the actual uh, interface itself of Elementor works, such as the exit point. Now, normally when you click the exit the dashboard, it'll do exactly that. So we click on there, it, it'll take us back to the dashboard and show us the page that we were currently working on minus the Elementor interface. Well, you may not want that to be the case. So we come back in, you can see the exit point. We can change edit screen is the default, which is the standard kind of way that Elementor works. But you can set it to come back to your pages or post lists, your library list, your admin dashboard, or the site's home page. So let's just take a look. Let's just do the pages list. Click Save Changes. Come back in and we'll edit with Elementor. So we can just pull that up. And then we'll see that when we click on the exit, the dashboard, we'll no longer go back to the actual page we were editing. We'll go back to the pages list. So again, one of those nice little tweaks that just enhances the way that you may work as opposed to the way that Elementor works as default straight out of the box. So again, pretty cool. Then you've got the option exit target, same tab and window, or you can actually have it to go to a new tab or window. So let's do that again. Save our changes on there. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back in. We'll come back in and edit the same page with Elementor. And then we'll find that when we actually close this and say exit to dashboard, it'll open up a new tab and take us back to the dashboard while leaving the Elementor editor and the page we're editing all open for us. Again, quite a cool little tweak. Whether it's something you think would be useful for the way that you work, obviously it's on a case-by-case -case basis, but nice to have the option should you want it. Now, one of the other nice things is we've got the exit name. Now, as default, it says exit the dashboard, but if we change this to pages list, it might not make sense. So let's just say we'll change that from dashboard and we'll just put in pages list. So it'll kind of make more sense. And we'll say save changes, jump back over and refresh the page. And once that loads in, you can see now it says exit the pages list. And we can also come back in and if we want to, we can update the view live page as well. So we can keep a consistency there that makes sense to the end user, whether that's ourselves or a client. So that's all we've got in there, except for the enable particles and parallax. Now we're gonna come back to those right at the end once I've covered the advanced settings, because these kind of warrant a little bit more information in their own right. So if we've got the advanced settings, you can see we've got options for Elementor and Dashboard, Welcome Panel, and Panel Template ID. So what these advanced settings do is they give us the ability to create custom templates that we can then use as part of the dashboard of WordPress. So if you wanted to make a sort of welcome screen when someone logs into your website, a client, for example, that has a link to videos and help and all support and all that kind of good stuff, you can do that by using this particular advanced section. So I'll show you how you can use that. Now I created a basic template, just pulled in something so we've got some content and I'll show you how we use it. So the Elementor and Dashboard, if we disable that, we can load the contents of the template into the dashboard, but it won't pick up the Elementor styling. So we won't have full control over the way that everything looks. So I'd recommend if you want to create this custom welcome panel, using the Elementor and a Dashboard is something you want to set to be yes. Next up, we've got the option to choose whether we want to use a welcome panel. Again, we'll say yes for this, and once we do that, we've got the option then to choose what template we want to use. Now, this is just a normal standard Elementor template. You can create that, go into My Templates, create a new template in there. I'd recommend using something like a section template because then you don't have headers and footers to play about with. Very simple. 
Once you've done that, you can then come in and you can choose that particular template. So you can see here's my custom welcome panel. I click on that, hit save changes. And I'll just come over and open up my dashboard. And you'll see now I've got a custom welcome screen that just loads up right at the top of everything so we can really customize the way that this looks to get a great onboarding experience for our end user or client. So to round the video up, let's take a look at the parallax and the particles effects. We'll start off with the parallax. So let's just say we'll enable that. And you'll see this is choose to load the parallax scripts and its controls or not. Now, as default, out of the box, Elementor doesn't really have any parallax effects built into it. You can create sort of pseudo parallax effects, but not a genuine parallax effect. So let's just say yes to that, hit save changes. All we're going to do is we'll jump over now to our pages section and we'll go to all pages. So we'll now come down to our parallax option and we'll say edit with Elementor. We'll let that load up and we'll take a look at how we can start controlling it. So you can see I've created a basic layout. I need to now select the row that has the background image associated with it we want to give the parallax effect to. So I click on that. You can see that opens up the layout options on the left hand side. We're going to jump over to style. We're into the background section and if we scroll down you can see we've got now a new option for enable parallax. We click on there, you can see we've got a few different options available. The image jumps a little bit to compensate for the size of the image to make sure the parallax effect will work. We've then got the option to choose the type of parallax effect that we want. And you can see we also have the option to change this based upon the device that the particular page is being viewed upon. So let's just say for this example, we'll say scroll and opacity. Next up, we've got the option for the speed. Now I'm gonna leave that set as it is, but you can see everything in here as some help information on this, it tells you how these different things will work, what settings you can use, and what kind of settings range are applied. Next up then, you've got Android support and iOS support. So if you find you get some kind of weird funky effects on either an Android or an iOS device, you can, if you want to, disable those. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty much all there is to it. So if we hit update on there, we jump over to our test page, and I'll just refresh this to make sure everything is in place. You can see now, if I scroll down the page, we start to get that fade effect and the parallax effect. So that's pretty cool. And you can see very, very easy to implement. Now, again, it would be one of those things that'd be quite nice where it says scroll and opacity. If we could actually change that from being scroll and opacity to maybe scroll and a certain color. So we could have it fade to black, for example, so it stands out a little better on a white background. But again, this is a free plugin and it does expand what you can do with the elementary interface and elementary itself considerably. Now, before we jump out of this interface and we just go and take a look at what we can do with the particles effect, there's one other thing I want to show you. Well, basically, it's two other things, but I want to show you anyway. I'm going to come down and select this particular block, this row. If we scroll down the interface, you can see at the bottom, we've now got two new entries. We've got delayed content and scheduled content. If we expand that out, you can see we can actually delay this content from being displayed. So if we enable that, you can see the time delay before this actually shows up on screen. So again, we've got this information that tells us the time and minutes for the delay and so on. So that's pretty cool. But we've also got scheduled content. And again, this works in the same way. If we click to enable that, we can specify the start date just by choosing that from a calendar picker. And we can also set the end date and time. So it's not limited to just the date, we can use the date and time. Now this is great if you're doing something like you want to have a banner on your site that offers a discount or offers a, a subscribe now, this is important, it's a time sensitive deadline, whatever you kind of want to say, and you want to sort of set it and forget it. So you can build it into your page, set the start date and the end date, and then forget about it, and that will then display during that date period. So I, again, I think that's pretty cool. So we've got one more thing I want to show you now before I wrap the video up, and that's how we can use the particles effect inside Elementor just by using this plugin. So let's just jump back in and take a look at that in action. So we're going to jump out of this, exit the dashboard, and we're going to come back into Elementor, and we're going to come to our granular controls. So all we need to do is enable particles. So we click on that, that'll enable it, save our changes, and we can then go back and take a look at our page and start implementing the particles effect into our designs. So with the particles enabled, let's just come back over to our pages and go into all pages. And we're going to open up the page I've already created, ready to take in the particles effect. So we'll edit with Elementor. 
And what I've done is I've basically created a simple row and put a spacer in there. Now you could make this anything you want. What goes in there is irrelevant because it lies underneath your actual content, but on top of the background image you set. So if we make sure this is selected and come over to our styles option, again, you can see the background. I've created my background. And if I scroll down, I've got the option now where I had enable parallax. I've also now got enable particles. So once I click on that, you can see we've got some simple options. The height, which in this example, I've set my spacer to be 600 pixels high. So I'm making sure that everything is in line. So I'm setting that to 600 pixels high as well. The next thing you've got is to pick up the sort of the particles JSON file. Now as default, you won't have anything loaded in. But what you can do is you can click on this little click on here to generate it. That'll take you over to this particular site. And what you can do then is you can use all the options down the right hand side to customize the particles effect that you want from a whole array of different effects that you can create. And all you need to do then is click on the download current config JSON file. That'll download a file to your computer as a JSON file, which is the same kind of file type that you use when you create templates inside Elementor. And what you can do then is you can simply double click and open that up. Now, if you haven't got anything associated with it, if you're using a PC, you can just associate it with Notepad and it'll just pull in all the settings for that. If obviously, if you're working with a Mac, anything that's just a basic vanilla text editor is gonna work perfectly fine. Once you've done that, we're gonna select all of the content in there, highlight it, copy it, and then all you need to do is underneath this particles JSON section, just paste it in there. And that's pretty much all there is to it. We click on update. Nothing will happen inside the actual interface itself inside Elemental. We can't see it in there. But if we jump over to our test page, and I'll just refresh this to make sure you can see exactly what's going on. There's our particles effect on top of our background. So if I just show you what I'm talking about, if I come back into this now and I just take out this spacer, and we drop in something else. So I'll close that down, get rid of that. We'll drop a heading in there. We'll worry what it says. I'll just set that to be center line and we'll just drop in some big margins at the top, say 200 pixels at the top, 200 at the bottom. And all we're gonna do is just come into the style and we'll just set this to be white and we'll bump the size up just to show you exactly what's going on. And we'll set the transform up. Okay, so there we go. So very, very simple. We'll update that page, jump back over to our test, refresh it. And there's our text sitting on top of our particles effect, which is on top of our background effect. And that's pretty much all there is to it. In my opinion, this is probably one of the best plugins out there that's absolutely free that doesn't just add extra functions to Elementor in the shape of widgets. It enhances the interface and makes it much more usable, which I think is fantastic. And the fact it's completely free takes it to a whole new level. So I hope this has continued to be developed. It would be nice to see some of the things that are inside this plugin being taken on board inside Elementor itself. But for now, we've got this great plugin. I would recommend checking it out. The link is in the description below. So if you want to go and grab it and install it for yourself, I'd highly recommend it. Well, that pretty much wraps up this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button and hit that bell icon to be notified every time new content is added to the channel. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel, or you'd just like to get into a conversation, please pop them in the comments section below. I love hearing from you guys and get in a bit of a sort of two-way conversation where we can all interact with each other and learn more and more and more about web design, Elemental and WordPress. Well, until next time, take care.